What are the Tosafot uh, Tuch, and what was Eliezer and Tuch's role in editing them? Okay, so this brings us to these Tosafot collections, right? Again, by the time you get to the mid 13th century, you've got layers and layers and layers of Tosafot on different tractates. Some of them do go with each other. Some of them are separate. And so you get a series of figures in the, again, Rashmi Shans has edited the earlier material and Ruta Sirleon has edited, these students of Re have edited some of the early edited, redacted, put together some of the early material. But by the time you get to the mid and mid to late 13th century, the last part of this period, you really need um, massive, you know, organizing. And there are several figures who do this. Perhaps the most famous in some respects is Rabbi Lazami Tuch. Interesting, Machloket between Professor Urbach, Halav HaShalom, and others is Tuch. It's a funny name. Spelled usually with a tet, except in those medieval sources that's spelled with a taf, right? Um, is it Turchheim in Germany, a German town? We're not sure exactly, but we know we think we know approximately where it is. Or is it Tux, some kind of French settlement? The reason that question comes up is because Rabbi Yezami Tuch worked mostly with Tosot Rabbeinu Tam Ri Rashmi Shans. It's organizing and cutting down, fitting in the earlier material with a little bit of later material. The other reason we like Tosfot Tuch is because, as fate would have it, his Tosfot were the ones that lead the league, more or less, in terms of what appears in our printed Talmud. In other words, his editing job or his redacting job was good enough, so good, that, you know, again, that begs the question, how do we know what Tosfot we have and why? And the why sometimes is because that's the manuscript that was available. Very hard to know in exact science. But as it turns out, his fingerprints are all over our printed Tosfot. Again, you it's, it, he mostly worked. He didn't work with 13th century material. He had his own notes that were put into what he called Gilio Note. He made footnotes for his own stuff. I had a doctoral student, uh, actually, he's a Skan Menachelet Shalavim, Ari Libowitz, did a wonderful dissertation on Razmi Tuch, where he separate, he showed what he put in the Tosfot, what he put in the Gilio Note. Very nice job. But he basically brings all that earlier material together and shortens and 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 edits which is good and bad. The good news is it fits on the page, or the page fits on it. The not as good news is you have to make choices. You have to make snips. You have to make edits. And even if you're a brilliant editor, you know we'd be better off if we had every word of the earlier material. We don't always have that. And that's why sometimes it looks like a little, little choppy. So he's perhaps the most popular or the most productive editor of this type. But there are others. Rab Asher ben Yechiel, the Rosh, who people might know his biography a little bit. He's a student of Maharam, again, late 13th century Germany, not a place you want to be. The Rush, while his Rebbe's body is still in jail in 1303-4, leaves Germany, goes through France, northern, southern, down, ultimately down to Spain. The Rashba directs him to Toledo, where he settles. And already in Germany, he produced what we call Tosfot HaRosh. Tosfot HaRosh are his take on Tosfot Shans, again, with addenda. From his Rebbe, from the Rambam, printed Tosfot hardly ever quote the Rambam. He quotes the Rambam, he quotes the Rivid, he went through southern France and so on and so forth. Interestingly, not one of the printed Tosfot that we have to any Masechta are Tosfot Arash. We have 20 Masechtas of it. He did a great job. 20 is, you know, two thirds of the extant Talmudic uh, uh, Masechtot, but those did not make it into the printed edition. Uh, again, not everybody had them through the centuries. By now, we've had most of them published by Israel. They're very helpful. The reason they're very helpful is because he basically starts the Tosfot Shans. Those are the clearest. And he doesn't do the same kind of heavy editing as Leazim Ituch. So Yeshiva Bachram and Benot Yeshiva will all tell you, you're having trouble with a Tosfot? Get the Tosfot Harash. Because it's a little bit earlier stuff, a little bigger, a little clearer, less cutting. But again, on the other hand, Printed Tosfot don't include Tosfot Harash. They do include Tosfot Tuch. There are others. Um, um, so, my, so, 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 Tosfot, so Tosfot Tuch, in addition to editing, we have his original commentary as well. Within... Well, we, we, have, we have his notes, if you will. We have his further Chidushim. He studied with people in both northern France and Germany in the mid-13th century. We have some of that. But that he segregates so as not to confuse things, which is helpful. Povisham, those things appear in the printed Tosfot, but usually not. 
Hovisham, you'll see, you know, things from under the line, so to speak. Um, I want to mention one more name. My candidate for French editor of the whatever is Rabbi Peretz of Corbeil. Again, late 13th century, a little older than the Rosh, around the time of Velez um, who's a student of a very interesting Beit Midrash at Evreux. Evreux in Normandy actually is responsible for our toast vote to Kiddushin. Um, those who learn Kiddushin say, wait, they quote the Ram all the time. The Ram isn't the Rambam, the Ram isn't the Marami Rittenberg. It's from Moshe of Evreux. It's uh, this particular Tosfist who studied with um, uh, uh, Yudas Leon. Um, they're very interesting Tosfotis, Tosfot. Rabbeinu Peretz was their student, as was the Rabbi Yitzchak of Corbeil, the author of the Sefer Mitzvot Katan, on which Rabbeinu Peretz also commented. Anyway, Rabbeinu Peretz, between Tosfot Evro and Tosfot Rabbeinu Peretz, uh, almost as many, I think, of our printed Tosfot that are Tuch are Evro Peretz. So they need a new look. I mean, they've had a look, but they, I'm going to give them one. They need a new look. Um, because again, they are uh, Rabbeinu Peretz, I would say he was also a colleague of Maharam. He was he considered Maharam his teacher, even though he's in France, he's in Germany. But they they met, they 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 communicated. Rabbeinu Peretz and Evrel are very creative. There's new stuff there. They're not they're not changing the way Tosfot does business. Uh, they're doing business like the older Tosfot, but they've got a lot of new material. So you've got these three or four um, collections again: Tuch, Rosh, Peretz, and there were some others. But and, the re, and the re, and the re, the re again wrote some of his own or his students. Rashmi Shans is his writer. He's his body man. He's his, he's his Boswell. You know, he's writing up the stuff. So the re was Zoha to this great Talmud who, whatever he didn't write, he wrote. By the way, big question: Tosfot re were they written by re? Were they written up by the Rashmi Shans? Did the re go over them? Did the re not go over them? You know, like Rabbi Lichtenstein said, "Sal Mugal, you there a shiva lo Mugal, right?" Um, you know, they put out all the notes. You know, he did look at it. He didn't look. Um, did it? And the answer to that question is yes. We don't know. <laughs> In other words, any of those possibilities are possible. So re is obviously the central figure. He he and Rabbi Tam get the most hits. Right, on every page of Tosfot, if you don't see a Ria or a Benu Tam, you, you, you may send it back to the printer, you know, something's wrong. But um, who wrote those down? So the buck stopped with Rosh Mishans, but between all of them, a lot of his Torah is there. Interesting, by the way, in the case of Ri, um, two people, uh, uh, two of my colleagues, uh, one at Bar Ilan and one at Ben Gurion, put out not so long ago, Chuvot Ri. The Ri also wrote a lot of Psakimu Chuvot. They don't appear in Toso. Sometimes they're alluded to. So something, if you look at the manuscripts, there's always something extra we can find. That's the other thing about this. Whenever you think Mitsinu, Mitsinu, lo Mitsinu, there's more. I, again, the fact is that by now, because Toso is so popular, whether it's, you know, scholarly groups or or lumdisha groups or whoever most of the manuscripts of tosfot x y and z have been published but there are all these ancillary pieces that if you want to study the balaya tosfot i once went to one of my seminars in tosfot you're probably going to notice that most of the text in the texts in the packet are not tosfot on shas they are sifra halacha they're chidushi, they're this because again a lot of it ends up falling into the these other literary vehicles, but it's still Tosfot material. It's material of Balayat Tosfot, Asur Lahaniach. You've got to, you've got to put it together.